Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique Ripper, Reckoning. Now before we get started, and before you get excited, I would just like to warn you all, you probably will not be able to get this weapon as Bethesda have really, really screwed this up. If you are playing on PC, you should hopefully be able to follow the steps I walk us through to be able to acquire Reckoning. If you are playing on console, I can only apologize on behalf of Bethesda as they really, really messed this up. And who knows, yours may work perfectly. So, first things first, you will need to get Cap Collector to rank 2, and Local Leader, also to rank 2. So once both the Cap Collector perk and the Local Leader perk are at rank 2, you want to head to your settlement, go into the workshop, head across to stores, head to weapons, and then at the very right we will have the Weapons Emporium. We need to build one of these. Unfortunately, as you can see, each Weapons Emporium costs 3,000 caps to build. For the next step, we need to connect settlements via supply lines. To do this, we need the local leader perk at rank 1, but luckily we already have it at rank 2 after building that weapons emporium. The key here is to make sure that the settlements connected via supply lines have a combined settler population of 30 or higher. To do this, all you need to do is go to one of your settlements, enter the workshop, walk up to a settler, and once you toggle over them at the bottom, you will see a supply line option. When you click the supply line option, a list of your settlements will come up. To establish a supply line, simply select one of the settlements on that list. Once doing so, of course, the settlement you're in and the settlement you have selected will now be connected via a supply line. So what I have done is gone to Ten Pines Bluff, one of my existing settlements, and established supply lines between Ten Pines Bluff and all of my other settlements. So because Ten Pines Bluff is connected with all these settlements, together as a collective, their population of settlers is higher than 30. Which, along with the Weapons Emporium, is an absolutely vital part of acquiring Reckoning. For the next step, we need to find a traveling merchant named Smiling Larry in a random encounter. The easiest way to do this is to force random encounters. The best place to do this is near the Cambridge Polymer Labs. When we look at the Pip-Boy map, we can see that the Cambridge Polymer Labs is to the north-northwest of Diamond City. So once we're out the front, we want to save it in case anything goes wrong. So after saving, we want to head to the south and then follow the road around to the west. Continue following this road for a little bit to the west until we encounter the two road blockades. Once once here, save again. This will be our loading point for when we do not encounter the correct random encounter. Then continue following the road to the west and it will turn up towards the north. Once you hit this fallen billboard, you can either jump over it or go around it. It depends how you're feeling. There's only a little bit more to go. Just here, we will find two fallen branches on the road. We can walk up to them and turn around. After we head back towards the road barricades and jump off the billboard, we will be faced with this random encounter in which we have forced. So we didn't run into Smiling Larry, but that's no problem. All we need to do is load the save we just made at the road barricades. Once we load that save, do exactly the same thing, run down the road until we hit the branches, turn around, and hopefully we will encounter Smiling Larry. Of course, continue doing this until you do encounter him. And then eventually it will happen. We will encounter Smiling Larry with his Brahmin and his two bodyguards. Provided we have the weapons emporium and our settlements connected via supply lines have a population of 30 or higher, the top dialogue option will be work for me. Once we click this, he will agree and we will get a list of our settlements and we can send him to whichever one we desire. Preferably, you want to send him to the settlement in which you built the weapons emporium. After sending Smiling Larry to the appropriate settlement, you also want to head to that same settlement. Once there, go into workshop mode, walk up to Smiling Larry, click to command, walk over to the weapons emporium and assign Smiling Larry to your weapons emporium. Smiling Larry is the only rank 4 weapons vendor in the game. So once he's working at your weapons emporium, you can speak to him to barter. And sure enough, in his giant list of weapons down in R, we will find Reckoning, the unique ripper that all that effort was for. So this is how it should work in an ideal world if Bethesda did everything correctly. Now we will be running through what will probably actually happen when you try and do this. And I genuinely hope for your sake this does not happen. 
happen to you. So the first time I encountered Smiling Larry, I did meet all of the requirements, I went out trying to find him, and I did find him, and he wouldn't even talk to me. So, there's a bug for you. Second time I found him was in a forced encounter, and once again I met all of the requirements to be able to hire him for my settlement, but that option wasn't there. So I did it again, continued forcing encounters, until once again I found Smiling Larry. But incredibly this time it was exactly the same. The option to hire him was not there. So a pretty bad track record so far. Then what I did was went back to my base and built four weapons emporiums, which you do not need to do. But for whatever buggy reason, this seemed to be somewhat of an incentive for Smiling Larry. After doing that, I went and encountered him for the fourth time, and luckily this time it worked. The option to hire him was there. So if having one weapons emporium doesn't work for you, try building four and being massively in debt. So on this fourth encounter, I decided to send him to Ten Pines Bluff, one of my settlements with a weapons emporium. So I went to Ten Pines Bluff, looked everywhere, and Larry was nowhere to be found. So I went to a bed and I waited for a week. Good old unreliable Smiling Larry was still nowhere to be found, even though he was taking up one of the settlement's population slots. So why not do some good old console commands to find out why it was late for work? I teleported my character to Smiling Larry and look where he was, doesn't look like Ten Pines Bluff. It looks like some kind of messed up random encounter test cell. So Bethesda, there's a bug for you to iron out. So if you're playing on console and this happens to you, he never shows up to the settlement, this is probably where he is, which unfortunately probably means it's screwed until Bethesda patches it. And once again, all I can do is apologize on behalf of Bethesda for royally ruining this component of the game for you. But if you are on PC, this is how you can fix it. Go into the console by hitting the tilt key, which is to the left of the one on your keyboard. Once here, type in prid space 2F2A7, enter. This will target Smiling Larry. Then type in move to space player. This will then teleport Smiling Larry to you, the player. Now, although he was assigned to Ten Pines Bluff and he is now here at Ten Pines Bluff, you will not be able to interact with him inside the workshop like you would any other settler. As you can see, there's absolutely no options when hovering over Smiling Larry. To fix this, go back into the console, type in set PV space B commandable space one, hitting enter at the end of course. Then type set PV space B allow move space one, enter. And finally set PV space B allow caravan space one and enter. After typing in those console commands, you need to go to your map and fast travel as far away from Smiling Larry as you can. The reason for this is we need to exit the cell that Smiling Larry is currently in. So once you fast travel away, you can head straight back to your settlement where Smiling Larry is, which is exactly what we're doing. Once we're back at the settlement with Smiling Larry and we're in the workshop mode, we will now be able to interact with Smiling Larry as if he was any other settler. Course, click command, go up to your weapons emporium and assign Smiling Larry to your weapons emporium. And then just as before, once Smiling Larry is working at our weapons emporium, he is the only rank four weapons vendor in the game and will sell a very special list of weapons. The most special of all is the unique Ripper, Reckoning. As all Always, the price of the weapon will vary depending on your character's charisma level and whether you have any bobblehead, perk, or magazine effects applied that will affect the price. If you ever get to this stage where you can actually buy this weapon off Smiling Larry, buy it instantly. Before you get stung, once again, by the swarm that is Bethesda's bugs. Now before looking at Reckoning's base stats, as always I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead, perk, or magazine effects applied, so we will be getting the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon Reckoning. First up, we're going to be taking a quick look at Reckoning when it has no modifications applied to it. As we can see, it has a base ballistic damage of 4, its speed is very fast, its weight is 6, and its value is 750. Now we're going to be heading to the weapons bench and putting the extended blade modification on Reckoning. As we can see, it does exceptional damage and the target bleeds. And in terms of perks to put this modification on Reckoning, we will need Blacksmith at rank 3. So now that Reckoning has the extended blade modification, it has a base ballistic damage of 7, its speed is very fast, its weight is 9, and its value has gone up to 775. Up at the top in the middle we can see Reckoning. Take 15% less damage while standing and not moving. An interesting legendary effect, but it goes hand in hand with Rooted, especially rank 2 of the Rooted perk. While standing still, you now gain plus 50 damage resistance
resistance and your melee and unarmed attacks deal 50% more damage. So that effect by itself almost makes Reckoning more of a defensive weapon as when you're standing still it stops damage coming to you, instead of most effects which increase damage going to the enemy. Reckoning is of course a unique variant of the Ripper, a weaponized chainsaw-like weapon that was used by the military before the war, most likely in hand-to-hand -hand combat or as a utility, like a multi-tool. Although on the face of it, it may seem that Reckoning has a very low damage, which I suppose it does, don't forget its speed is very fast. Because Reckoning is a chain blade type weapon, it has a very high DPS. Also, once you fully mod it out with the extended blade modification, it becomes a truly impending weapon due to the bleeding effect added. It can execute a powerful slashing attack on command outside of that, thanks to the addition of a separate melee power attack attack button. Reckoning normally inflicts 5 hits per attack in VATS, and after you apply the extended blade modification it will add a bleeding effect. So for every attack you will get 5 hits and 5 stacks of the bleeding effect, making Reckoning with an extended blade one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Which puts it in my own personal category of weapon. Ah, oh, it's an absolute bloody ripper! Preferably when using Reckoning, of course, you want to hold an attack on the enemy for as long as you can. Because its speed is very fast, it hits more than once per second. And as we discussed, that extra bleed effect from the extended blade stacks as well with each hit. When this weapon was built, it sure would have been on the cutting edge of technology. The only real downsides with Reckoning is, of course, that you cannot hit enemies that are very, very far away. However, this can be somewhat fixed with the second rank of the Blitz perk. And of course, its reach isn't as long as some of the other melee weapons, but we're only missing a couple of inches. Because really, size doesn't matter, am I right ladies? No? Ah, oh, shit. Well, most commonly when slicing through enemies, you will cut straight through their lumbar. It's almost as if it was built for it. One thing I can confirm is that with a set of teeth like that, it sure delivers one hell of a bite. Reckoning even has a similar smile to Jaws from James Bond. And finally, it's best used when asking your Chinese mate for his opinion. So. What do you reckon, Ning? Ha, I bet no one saw that coming. And here it is, Reckoning in action. I've been Carol, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I do hope that this video helped you in some way in acquiring this weapon or understanding why it will not bloody work for you. Once again, thank you very much Bethesda. If you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. Of course, this will take you directly to my Fallout 4 guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there.